Uh, hello and welcome to Travelgram. We are pleased to welcome the co-founder of Rare India, Shobha Mohan, for a special episode to coincide with the World Tourism Day. Rare India is a network of some of the most beautiful boutique luxury hotels and experiences across India, Bhutan and Nepal. Shobha is an articulate votary of both sustainable travel and slow travel, both imperative needs of the current times. She believes sensitive and collaborative tourism rather than an insular version of what luxury tourism represents is the future. Um, these are very important words today, uh, Shobha, you know, uh, when we're talking about, say, collaborative tourism, which you have spoken about on several platforms, when you're talking about sustainable tourism. What do these words mean to you? Actually, what does luxury travel mean to you? And when you put that these words in context of luxury travel, what does that represent? Thank you. Uh, it's it's a pleasure as always to be chatting with you. And uh, yeah, for me, uh, when I talk about luxury and for a long time, uh, what we were doing with Rare was basically uh, promoting the luxury of experiences. Uh, it did not conform to the usual branded, uh, uh, you know, branded theories of luxury. Uh, you know, those, those buffets and things like that. But we were always looking at subtle luxury, luxuries, for instance, uh, far, this farm to table idea before it actually took a code like this farm to table, fresh cooked food without a menu, you know, somebody coming up to you and asking what you would you what would you like to have today. Those are the kind of luxuries we always hinted upon, right? And uh, as we, as business unfolded in this uh, representation and marketing sales space for independent uh, hotels, uh, who are their personal brands uh, anyway, uh, you know, luxury meant different things with different hotel hoteliers, with different uh, partner hotels. Uh, and at that point in time, there was no concrete coding to this, right? And, uh, but we kind of kept on hinting at these subtle nuances of uh, farm to table, fresh cooked food. There was no buffet that you, would, you can go and access. It was always, what would you like to have today? Kind of a, uh, you know, experience at your dinner table. Uh, or what would you like to have for lunch? Because if you wanted to have chicken for lunch, you'd probably go and get it fresh. Or if you wanted to have fish, they'd probably go and uh, catch the, you know, get the catch of the day. So these were, uh, you know, th these are subtle luxuries of uh, you know of ideas and instances and experiences that only got coded now you know that only kind of got into um, you know they, they it all came together as responsible tourism or sustainable tourism and now more and more they're talking about regenerative tourism uh, because they you know they're the the a, a popular idea that is uh, being beginning to unfold is that uh, sustainability is static while regenerative is actually going back to where we started, which I think is a brilliant idea. So that is what, how luxury kind of redefined itself as days went by. And especially for partner hotels, Andre, luxury also started to mean a lot of space, you know, uh, uh, great, uh, you know, no other hotel in sight, not another tourist that you could see. Uh, you know, sitting and chatting with like-minded people who hold the same values as yourself from across the globe. So these kind of things became a part of an intangible luxury, right? Of course, the, uh, you know, the style, I, I always like to refer to style because these are all independent individual uh, initiatives and uh, each hotel had that style quotient of that particular owner, right? So you could not, I mean, there was no, you couldn't group them as, you know, they all have CCTVs. You couldn't say things like that, you know? Uh, they all have, um, uh, you know, like, um, uh, they, uh, they all had uh, nine inch uh, snoozer mattresses. I, in fact, I, I hated saying these, uh, you know, these blanket terms. Just, uh, I hated using these things saying, uh, all our hotels have this. I'd rather go on into details of each and every hotel. So they have this while they actually look at their dining experience like this. So these were all independently, individually coded um, ideas of luxury, which, uh, you know, it, it took a lot of, uh, ex I mean, I won't say explaining to do, but you needed to see it to believe it. It had to touch a chord. So marketing became more and more difficult, 
right? And uh, and always referral uh, reference marketing. Uh, you know, if a tour operator endorsed it, or you went and saw it, and you told your friends adequately. You know, the the pe people with the similar value systems, or people with similar interests, would come together and use these hotels. So that is how luxury stuff was looking uh, looked like over a period of time. As we also evolved, uh, and we started to take on more and more hotels. Uh, you know the, the um, putting them together as uh, you know geographically putting them together experientially uh, putting them together as the attributes that they chose to follow where responsible tourism is concerned those kind of became easier and uh, so uh, that's very interesting given that uh, we are in a phase where people will probably looking for uh, not just hotels that are in more secluded uh, uh, but also for travel experiences that you know allow them to isolate and yet have a very differential kind of a travel experiences. Uh, when you put your hotels and your uh, the destinations you are in uh, perspective, how does that work out? Uh, also, in some sense, uh, how do you have you chosen? Uh, is it is this that the uh, hotel follows a destination or a destination follows a hotel? In the sense, was when you choose something to be part of your network. Does the hotel come first? The destination come first? How does it work in uh, sync? Because I do know that Rare doesn't just look at the hotel, but also what it offers around it. So uh, and, and also put it. Uh, so and besides talking about it, also put us it in perspective of how would that work in today's current time, current times we are in. So to be very honest, uh, I, this whole thing of people wanting to go off to exclusive places. I don't think I see a lot of that happening. See, travel is actually more or less a very social activity. Uh, you, I mean, also because of uh, several um, uh, challenges with uh, protocols and, you know, borders being closed and states having, uh, you know, different um, uh, protocols for uh, COVID. Uh, it's not really as if the, you know, far flung destinations are being inundated with people. It's just not like that. Uh, the reality is, people do want to go off to places, uh, they want to go get out of the house. That is reality. They are looking at different ideas. Yes, there might, uh, you know, like 10, 20% of people are uh, quite, um, uh, you know, quite anal about wanting to go to a hotel, which is also anal about this whole uh, protocol thing. But on the, on the other hand, over 70 to 80% of people like the freedom of just going away, being, you know, not being stopped by any protocols, not being asked for anything. And Rajasthan is a good example from Delhi. A weekend after weekends, hotels, boutique, offbeat, uh, brand hotels, they, are all, they all see very, very healthy occupancies. Uh, that is to answer your first question. The second question is whether we, we look at the destination of the hotel first. In fact, I look at the owner. What is it that he or she is trying to say? What is it that he's trying to build and what is he trying to project? Uh, of course, it has to be a business proposition. Uh, and uh, I mean, the, the more crazy the business proposition, the more, uh, the, the more uh, intense the, um, the passion to, uh, you know, to come up with something that is unique for tourism or to protect and preserve something that you know, they feel passionately about. That is actually is the very beginning of what how I would start looking at a partner, right? Because it uh, a of course it um, completely resonates with what we do at Rare. You pick up a destination, put it on the tourism map, create value for the destination, create value for the community, and the hotel is in the epicenter of it. So that's the whole idea. Uh, then some, uh, you know, then they, of course, the, then the destination kind of evolves around it. And a, great, a very small example I'll give you. Tanjavur was always there as a destination in southern India, in Tamil Nadu, right? Uh, then suddenly, uh, I mean, there have been lots of hotels and slowly Tanjavur, especially in the, uh, I won't say the Indian traveler because there's so many temples there. So the local traveler always travel for the temples and, the, and for pilgrimage, but the international traveler, uh, started to look at Tanjore as a no-night destination in the sense they would go just take a look at the Brihadeswara temple and continue forward and go off to Madurai or into Kerala or whatever. Swatma came in. First of all, uh, Kritika was brilliant. She called it Tanjore and not Tanjore like most people would like to do. So that in itself put a little, uh, you know, they, it said, okay, this is, uh, you know, authenticity. Right. And then she, uh, I mean, from the concept, from the idea of the hotel, 
uh, right from making it a vegetarian uh, uh, place to bringing in the local, uh, the Brahminical cuisine to the art, to the craft, to the veena makers, to the, the Carnatic Music Academy about 30 kilometers away, the festivals and everything. She kind of wove the story so efficiently. So Tanjau today is a three night destination. Now, in this case, the, uh, the destination came later. It's the hotel that made the destination. And today, uh, travelers from around the world, even within the country, because of the Navagraha temples, you know, get to spend two to three nights there. And some, so from being a complete, you know, drive-by destination, she, a, a hotel like Swatma can actually create so much impact for a destination. So that's the other way of looking at it. So uh, an established destination might, I might pick up a hotel from an established destination if it's able to tell a more compelling story. And there are several instances like that. We have Bikaner that came into popular, it came back into popular travel itineraries because again, Narendra Bhavan there told a very compelling story. Uh, Raz Jodhpur in the heart of the walled uh, city, uh, taking on initiatives like, uh, you know, uh, uh, cleaning up around, the, uh, around their hotel, uh, uh, you know, working on the step well by uh, preserving it. It all also the project, which Absolutely. was quite, uh, with, I think with Lee Sunil, which was, uh, and a couple of other collaborators. Other collaborators, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it just kind of, with, with the Jodhpur Society, with, with the, with the uh, Jodhpur Municipal Corporation, they all came together and, uh, you know, as a, um, uh, you know, Jodhpur has all, all, always been a very, very uh, important uh, part of the, uh, of the quadrangle uh, in, uh, in Rajasthan. But a property like uh, Ras, including the fact that they married contemporary and heritage in a very, very um, uh, fashionable way, very chic. And so it kind of told a very different story. So, um, you know, sometimes the... Most importantly, which is why I say the owner comes first, their vision, their dream for the destination, and then what they have been, how far they have been able to achieve what they've been trying to put out. Absolutely. So is there any destination that you have taken over, say, in the last uh, couple of years, which has surprised you for, uh, for uh, you know, uh, which is really, which is really not on India's map uh, in terms of a tourist destination? in terms of some uh, some where people travel nice to for it's uh, for what it has achieved uh, so you know when they see uh, some some of the hotels that come on board like that where they still they were still struggling to establish the destination and suddenly they uh, you know suddenly they flourish and suddenly it's it's with everybody it's also about the state being as a as a popular um, you know destination you know um, how it markets itself like west bengal is a great idea it is a great example and uh, west bengal and odisha for instance so their marketing capabilities um, were not i mean till about 4 5 years ago they were not that uh, you know focused on marketing their destination in a special way once they started doing that once they started to highlight the festivals the durga puja the the, uh, the rasogullas and everything suddenly it started to pick up and then the hoteliers kind of really get in uh, with gusto so for example badikoti in murshidabad and uh, rajbadi bawali just outside of calcutta two very very um, intense uh, experiences and uh, the way they bring in every Thing, especially Bari Koti with, you know, see, these are personal endeavors at uh, repurposing heritage for restoring and repurposing heritage. And to create a destination, they not only have to start talking about the destination, about its connectivity, access, what can people do, but also curating something. I mean, they really have no blueprint to follow. So it's essentially their creative minds putting it together, uh, you know, coming up with a compelling story. Another beautiful place, which I hope sees uh, more and more attention as it gets more and more attention in the coming years is of course Orissa. I mean, uh, I spent a uh, part of my childhood there and I, it's really one of my favorite destinations. Ticks now, all the boxes. Market very well over the last one and a half, two years. Yes, that's, that's what they did. But, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, see you, the, the state marketing itself very well. And you having adequate in infrastructure ability and individually each and every destination marketing itself very well are two different things. Uh, and it's very rare where both these things come together very nicely. So the state markets itself very, very well. And the independent stakeholders there are they are also having very 
very good and powerful stories to say. That is when the, the big magic happens, right? Currently with Odisha tourism, uh, you know, they, they still have to get very, very creative with what they do. And then they have to get their infrastructures right. So I'm talking about Belgadia Palace in Mayurban. These two lovely uh, ladies who promoted very young, totally passionate about their ancestral property, uh, about what they see and seek in and around their places and how they are able to really come up with a great story that only supports the, uh, the whole idea about Orissa, right? And my, my pet peeve with most state tourism is uh, there is a dancer, there is a temple, there is a tiger, there is some bird lurking around somewhere, and there is a heritage monument or there's a train running through. I mean, come on, really. I mean, this is every state's banner, almost always. And But there is so much to say. And the second thing, of course, is they want to make something like Singapore. They want to make something like in Thailand. Uh, you know, so there is, but to create a unique, experience like uh, Odisha has done this with this uh, eco state place that they have come up with. Uh, it's fantastic. I mean, and there is the potential for that. Absolutely. And uh, tell me again, the whole conversation has been around uh, sustainable uh, tourism, for instance, you know, uh, particularly in the post COVID, uh, I, we can't say we're still in the middle of the pandemic, but, uh, you know, in the start of the pandemic, uh, what exactly does sustainable travel uh, mean in terms of, you know, India? What 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 would define actually sustainable travel? And is it possible to be sustainable uh, as far as you know, uh, India is concerned? Do we have the infrastructure, the thought process, the attitude that allows us to be sustainable? Yeah. So first of all, sustainable. Uh, you know, sustainable is an umbrella term. It refers to all, uh, you know, to all industries. I mean, even in print and media, keeping your uh, printing, you know, your printing and paper low would probably, uh, you know, uh, add up to your sustainable uh, value towards um, the, the industry. So sustainability is a, is a very, is a big umbrella term. More importantly, it is responsible tourism, right? So and uh, when you do when you say responsible tourism it kind of distributes the responsibility from from the government right down to the traveler and it can't happen i mean i as hotelier i am responsible my one hotel in this particular place is you know ticking all the boxes where responsible tourism is concerned but the rest of them are doing it it doesn't work like that the government has to put policies and uh, you know into place it has to give adequate support for people who do this. It also has to, um, you know, give incentives for people who are. So it begins right, at, right at the top, right? It it create it has to have very strict regulations in place for people, you know, uh, whether it is heritage or it's wildlife or something like that. So oh, that begins on the top, and then all the stakeholders in the middle, right? From the tour operator to the tour, to the to the uh, escorts, guides, and everybody, uh, to the uh, lodge owners and uh, you know trains, airlines, everybody in the in the service space, and finally the traveler. I mean, I could say what I want, but the traveler says I'll do what I please because I paid money and I want to. I have the ability to create as much uh, mess as possible. It's not adding up. So responsible tourism kind of really takes the responsibility from the government right down to the um, to the uh, end user, which is traveler. So as far as um, can can India uh, does India have a infrastructure to do so sustainable tourism? Uh, frankly, we don't have a choice. Our uh, our destinations are are being ruined at an alarming rate. Agra is no longer the kind of Agra that you saw 20 years ago. The Taj Mahal hasn't changed much, right? Absolutely. Literally, the, the town around it is no longer uh, that, that, that quaint little town that you want to see. There is garbage, there's so much filth, there is... You know, I mean, it's it's not it's not nice. I mean, it's really not a destination. Of course, it's providing a lot of jobs and opportunities, but then at what cost? But you right. go there and you just see the Taj Mahal and you come back. Yeah, Agra has so much to offer. There's, there's so much to offer. There are so many other ports. So many other. Fort, yeah. This is the way. It is. I'm guessing people don't like to stay back. Yeah, and but, but, uh, and uh, what I mean, say, what does it do? It just creates numbers to the Taj Mahal while the rest of the city doesn't, while 
the entire the the entire focus of a tourism or a hospitality project is to create value for the destination what kind of a uh, what kind of a tourism model is that when you you completely ruin the destination uh, rob it, rob it uh, rob the destination of its cultural uh, nuances uh, completely you know the their cuisines have changed you can get maggi everywhere so wh what wh what is the destination then right just the taj so that whole idea about what it would mean so where would you like to focus sustainability on that has to change and some of the i mean and sustainability uh, i mean or responsible tourism has a i mean it's, it's got a a lot of attributes you can look at i mean what do we do with our garbage what we do, do what do we do with our uh, water conservation what do we do with our how do we allow uh, travelers to discover destinations what do we do with our nature and wildlife what i mean so there is plenty to you know to look uh, into and uh, like somebody famously said for responsible tourism or for sustainability we don't need everybody doing the 100 things that need to be done we want everyone to do at least one thing very well so we'll read somewhere so uh, taking this conversation forward then you know this thing is that you have a, a very interesting net, uh, network of hotels in the himalayas for instance in the mountains uh, you also have hotels in nepal and bhutan yes uh, when you compare all these himalayan uh, destinations something like bhutan of course uh, based far uh, bigger on terms of both sustainability experiences culture if i'm not mistaken uh, nepal while it is quite polluted unfortunately also offers a very interesting experience of the uh, of the himalayas over there because you know the everest they have flights over the everest uh, they have even they take you to, to right to the you know they have helicopter flights to take you right up to the base of the everest uh indian himalayas seemingly don't have that well developed in terms of the cultural uh, socket etc where uh, if you compare the three nations where the himalayas are and where people go for mountain tourism what is lacking in india when you compare it with these our neighboring countries are much smaller with much lesser resources at their disposal so first of all is the sheer size uh, the pali i mean we are too too big right to be able to do though i won't say it. somebody recently told me that oh we are very big and what applies to nepal cannot apply to us so if you take nepal as a state in india the state tourism can achieve it right i mean i look at it like that so really um, you know i mean the sheer size of it really um, is 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 what the difficulty is bhutan has got it very right and uh, and like i told you before it the government has put down the regulations they have measured carrying capacities they uh, they they don't i mean i won't say they penalize you but if you want to see bhutan you have to pay a price Absolutely. right so that kind of checks the number of people that it makes it an aspirational destination i went when i went to bhutan jahan pe bhi thodi bahut jahan pe bhi thoda kooda dikhta tha jaise wo indian guest chhod ke ye indian ne kar diya this is what they used to say you know which is you know i used to like kids say ki main saaf kar deti hu but that's the thing so they they and at that point in time they were even thinking about uh, putting a you know cap on the number of indian travelers because they just used to drive across the border so this awareness um, for how we maintain our destination has to be a travelers initiative right and as far as uh, and i i'm glad uh, india is not doing um, uh, you know i mean though we have ladakh uh, i'm i'm glad we are not doing very intense um, uh, programs into the himalayas and things like that because we going we going to really ruin it any Which trekking group has pretty much uh, ruined it last yes year. yeah yeah so any uh, any trekking any uh, you know the chadar trek and all these famous trekking routes you just need to take a look i mean nepal is no better you saw that everest uh, you saw that uh, you know that gori everest picture they keep showing you where you know so much garbage and things like that the mansarovar trail which is supposed to be a pilgrim trail i mean imagine the amount of garbage people throw around we are just insensitive to these things and as a as a community i mean forget about travel as a community we need to get very very i mean uh, i i'm now i i just cannot i cannot bear with it i mean i i have no more patience i mean i i keep thinking time is running out and everything comes in plastic you know everything comes in plastic and this convenience of throwing away things is so much that 
yeah, the younger, they keep saying younger generation, younger generation, but for them, convenience is even, you know, even more than what it was for you and me, you know? So the, the amount of uh, use and throw stuff, the amount of packaging that comes in, it's just uh, enormous. Uh, that said, I think um, we do have the, uh, we need uh, attitude. We need, um, we need to have the attitude for wanting to make India a sustainable destination. And that's a, that attitude has to be with all of us, media, uh, you know, uh, tour operators, guides, uh, the government. We, we have to all start thinking and across industries, not only in tourism. I mean, I can, I can talk about uh, sustainability in the tourism business, but my packaging industry is bringing everything in plastic. I mean, uh, you know, the... Uh, my supply chain brings everything in plastic for me. So, I mean, how am I going to become a zero plastic uh, thing? Or the construction, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the developers and the construction companies don't believe in what I'm believing in. So, uh, you know, when they were going to repurposing or something like that, they completely ruin the, um, the architectural or the heritage fabric of a place. So again, where is the, the whole idea of uh, sustainability? So it's an attitude and an attribute that it has to, it has to be with all industries, with all people. And for this, the major thing, and especially because India is such a huge country, the government has to take the lead. The government, it has to be completely. And wherever, whichever small, big country where the government has taken the lead and set parameters and guidelines for running tourism or any other businesses and put a stringent norm for it, they've been successful. So, uh, you know, the same question then goes for our wildlife sanctuaries. I mean, uh, uh, it's not that Indian wildlife is anything lesser in terms of diversity or, uh, you know, in, in it's a stunning expanse than, say, wildlife in, Africa, in the African nations. Yeah. Um, in fact, there's so much of our forests that are unknown, undiscovered, which may actually be good because at least we are able to save them. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of when it comes to tourism potential, uh, Africa definitely the whole continent uh, scores in terms of the kind of experiences, the kind of hotels, uh, you know, and the way they've been able to preserve. Of course, there is the whole controversy about allowing hunting, not allowing hunting that goes on in the African nations. But putting that aside, uh, where do we lack again? I mean, is it... Uh, my personal opinion: We don't like biodiversity. Uh, is what do we what do we do? Why haven't we been able to, um, you know, kind of leverage such amazing wildlife we have in, in different topographies, from a desert to the uh, to the mountains? What yeah, uh, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. We lack nothing where wildlife is concerned. It's just that we haven't marketed as very uh, marketed ourselves very well. I go for uh, every year and this year I couldn't go. I used to go for this, uh, you know, uh, uh, well-known congregation of conservationists and marketing people from around the world. And uh, they, most of them don't even look at India from a wildlife perspective. If they do, they'd probably say tiger, but that's, that's all that they'd say. Uh, having said that, you're very right that uh, our forests are much, much more beautiful and lush. Uh, this, but you know, in in uh, comparison to Africa, where you kind of see these, uh, you know, animals just like lolling around there, and you know, lions sitting there, and cheetahs yawning at you, and stuff like that. Well, we don't have that kind of sighting simply because our forests are uh, under the uh, are the yeah under the government and they are, yeah under for the forest department, which is a great thing. I mean, which is good yeah. because uh, you know, uh, and so it's uh, not easy to spot the wildlife. It's not, but it's it's not about being easy or tough. It's also it's also how we market. I mean, the thing is, I could take you, and that is changing a little bit. I mean, I could take you into the forest, a great naturalist. I mean, see, uh, let, let me put it this way. They, you have to understand how Indian forests work. And that story, uh, a lodge owner or a, a tour operator has to be efficiently, has to efficiently tell the people. Unfortunately, our pinup for wildlife has been the tiger. And you really can't see the tiger all the time, right? And um, they, yeah, you. I mean, it's. I mean, it's in the jungle. There's so much. It's there's lovely and beautiful camouflage. And uh, they, but the the thing is that if you just um, if your entire wildlife experience is based on that tiger again, I told you, uh, when we do our state tourism banners, there's one tiger, there's one temple, there's a dancer. So there's that one tiger. So 
the tigers become unfortunately become our pin up uh, for wildlife and I, which is not which is we have so much birding it, not many people will know but we have over 1200 species of um, uh, of uh, uh, bird uh, bird species in our country right corbett alone has about half of this right so we uh, you know the, the, and then conservation story so we if you just base your uh, your uh, wildlife experience on the tiger you are looking away from a lot of others uh, you know other potential sightings the wild dog sightings are fantastic for instance you know the leopards the, the elephants and so there is so much to do plus of course the conservation success stories the relocation story the conservation luck unfortunately we take the easy way out so sweet <laughs> unfortunately we take the easy way out we want to show the tiger and say you come to india to see the tiger but that's not how it is you know so where is uh, much like africa we also have the big five most of our yeah, we, uh, have more than i uh, may have the big six or the big seven also yeah. uh, and i don't think we have been able to pick image of uh, it being such such a good uh, such by the hours uh, having having said that uh, you know uh, uh, tell me what are the destination you know now that things are opening up uh had has there been any renewed everybody had put their hopes on the domestic traveler uh have has the domestic traveler started to kind of book has, has is he living is he or she living up to the expectations of the uh, hospitality and travel industries are we seeing any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, attraction from there yeah of course the domestic market is uh, is traveling uh, i would like to refrain myself from you know talking about bouncing back and revenge tourism and things like that but people are looking to go out in a you know um, in a you know really looking to go out and look for that one uh, special place that they can go and spend 3 4 days or celebrate a birthday or an anniversary so that is really happening which is a, which is good what is not very good is that um, uh, again unfortunately in the in the rush for numbers we are again devaluing our products and really and this is for me was an opportunity to tell the indian traveler who who is a which is a fantastic market which is also a, uh, which is a, which is also a great um, uh, you know it's, it's a it's an all year all season market for us uh, to be able to show them quality and value and tell them okay you come to this uh, hotel because of this 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 and this here are different ways to explore our hotels here are different ways to explore this is why you would come to this hotel we are expensive because you have the ability to stay very close to the forest and have the opportunity to meet one of the greatest conservationists uh, alive today instead of doing that we are actually devaluing our brand by reducing prices you know that does two things it uh, even the brands which are who are well known their prices come down because their prices come down it also affects the smaller individual independent hoteliers now for example a big branded hotel is come and is cut down its price say by 50% right and a, a small hotelier an independent individual hotelier cannot cut it down by further so he even if he cuts down by 20% he say price at 15000 rupees and the big brand hotel one of the biggest and the you know a famous uh, palace hotel is priced at 20 as a customer you would rather go and stay that big brand that big palace at 20 rather than come into a lesser known brand however experiential it is by paying 15000 rupees though it is much cheaper so the, it is you know these kind of dynamics are and challenges are huge and uh, it's quite sad actually but uh, i uh, this is an opportunity to strategize for the indian market it's an evolving market to keep telling people that don't look for the deal and if you're talking about sustainability and promoting the destination and helping the community why would you want to bargain it's like saying i want to help you run your school or your community but uh, how much do you want so i say 10000 he say nahi nahi 5000 mein kaam kar lo you know that kind of stuff so this is my thing about uh, and it's a, this whole price war that's uh, that's brewing is a race to the bottom and one of the things about indian um, indian tourism is we have not been able to sell our value when people abroad say that indian destinations are becoming very expensive i want to tell them what a smallest hotel with a 
you know where i if i put if i sleep on the bed and i put two suitcases and one uh, computer bag i have no place to walk around that is priced at 3 350 uh, euros yes. right or uh, 350 uh, i mean 300 pounds or whatever services please go to the reception and get your bottle of water yourself and go and, re- and that's your service and for most of india where the service quality is so high the experience is so special you think we at about 150 to 200 dollars are expensive hotel so that is we are not been able to sell on value i mean we have so much to offer so uh, if you look at what's been happening uh, you know the last 2 3 months since we opened what are the destinations which are uh, gaining some traction and more importantly what are the destinations and experiences that you know your own network offers uh, uh, offers to travelers today you know which uh, which would help them to experience something new something renewed uh, something that you know is a little different a little sustainable uh, you know fits a lot of these bills that we are talking about these uh, tags that we are launching yeah so uh, uh, really you know um, at this point in time dipali it's all about convenience i mean really i'd like to say that people are you know you know doing but even when we are putting out our uh, you know our sales pitches we are we are having to say four hours from door to door five hours from door so it's mostly it is convenience and of course the best deal that is available this is uh, unfortunately what it is and of course uh, you know uh, if you have pets uh, chill child friendly now you want to take your parents or your in-laws if that's uh, convenient so it's a lot about convenience just now and that's what is really happening uh, just now but uh, in the in these uh, lockdown times we've had several interesting ideas that have been floated a lot of people have been doing i mean looking into their uh, you know uh, typically as one season rolls on into the other you generally don't have i mean you start off with a lot of ideas but everything is goes into the back burner once the uh, season begins and uh, earlier when there used to be very um, very market um, uh, uh um, season the inbound season and domestic season and a great off season period that no longer exists now so with the off season period for the inbound is season period for the uh, for the indian guests and things like that so there's hardly any time for you especially if you're in a pop up a popular place and you are doing well there's hardly any time to put in any new ideas or uh, you know any uh, new experiences in place Uh, so a lot of interesting things have happened like for instance we do we uh, we uh, market a, a, a cruise a, a cruising a river cruise company called assam bengal navigation they uh, they run river cruises in two of the mightiest rivers in india the greatest rivers of india the ganga and the brahmaputra they kind of were always a seven night 14 night uh, you know 12 night a long uh, uh, cruising uh, itinerary you could hop in and hop off at at midpoint but a uh, seven nights was a minimum so they have kind of relooked at their itineraries and they're making some th- short and sweet itineraries for four nights three nights basically to attract you know the the uh, regular audiences um, you know so that is there and then uh, there is uh, the um, niramaya retreat surya samudra which we've been marketing for several years now they've come up with this whole idea of functional medicine which is uh, not only about re- rejuvenating and um, not only about rejuvenation and um, a uh, relaxation and detox and everything it's also about looking into your familiar patterns and habits and your uh, your food habits and your sleeping habits and you know kind of literally growing uh, inside uh, is studying your dna and your history and everything uh, your uh, health your health and history and your uh, lifestyle to come up with solutions for you to do um, you know to uh, to completely uh, rejig you for urban living again for instance so functional medicine is another one uh, very important and a very interesting um, idea that has come up which i find it very fascinating because uh, you know not the usual medis- medicine uh, med- the medical sciences have a little bit of i mean they are slightly disconnected with um, uh, you know with personalities so it this deals with personalities it, it deals with habits it deal, uh, it deals with chronic issues right so that's very interesting i told you about assam bengal navigation there are um, there are other uh, you know our wildlife lodges are slowly opening up uh, they they everybody ha- is trying to redo their uh, their experience and services with all these uh, protocols for covid in place 
the other uh, interesting thing uh, would be uh, what we've been uh, trying to promote is, of course, driving distances, long driving distances. Uh, people kind of trying to drive uh, for 13, 14 hours to get to a destination, go and stay there for about seven, eight days. Of course, staycation, work from mountains, work from hills, work from beaches, all these are popular um, ideas. So some of these things, uh, I think, in the long run will really work. Uh, yeah, and I think it really will add value to a lot of things that we've been doing in travel. But currently, my challenge is to keep telling my hoteliers, sell on value, sell on value, sell on value, you know, so that's the... Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I think one big apprehension in India as we open up is to see when will actually our, uh, you know, international tourism open up for us because I think that had become a very significant stay as far as particularly luxury travel was concerned. Yes, yeah. Some of the big hotels in terms of experiences. Uh, we are very far from that scene, of course, uh, maybe another six months or if not more. But given, you know, the whole uh, apprehension about the rising COVID cases, about hygiene, sanitation, things that India is not very strong on, uh, what is it that we can do and sh should do? What's the kind of messaging that should go out from MOT and from our hotel groups to say that, yes, at some point we are safe to travel to, I mean, is our apprehension of how international tourism uh, open up, uh, uh, you know, does, does it have legs to stand on? How will that work? So, um, primarily, it's when the flights will begin. That is a very, very clear indication out to the uh, to the world uh, and to the uh, travelers to say we are ready and open to welcome you. And uh, the numbers, of course, the other thing is still the vaccine is really out. The fear of traveling is not it will not go uh, away. And the luxury traveler into India are largely the, um, you know, uh, people in these uh, in the older, you know, category, 60, 60 plus. Are, yeah, in fact, the very, very high end travelers are about 70. So uh, will they come? I mean, despite the fact that I mean, I've been talking to a few agents and they said, oh, we have some charters signed up for March. So currently people are looking at a little bit of inquiries coming in for March. Right. So I, bad. yeah, that's not, that's not bad. But uh, even if it comes back, I mean, in, in whatever semblance, like 20% of it comes back, it's not enough for the industry to stand back up on its feet. I mean, uh, a typical medium, mid-sized travel agency has about 28 to 25 to 30 uh, employees. And they've literally cut it down by half. And even in that half, they're paying half. Right. So for them, even to, uh, you know, uh, uphold a 50 percent uh, staff, uh, you know, staff strength at 20 percent of their annual revenues is just not going to happen. Right. So we are looking at, I mean, um, rationally, if you look at it and if you put all your numbers and crunch your numbers together, I think uh, even if the uh, vaccine comes out, the winter of 2021 is probably when we will start to see, um, you know, some adequate numbers. We'll be adding up numbers in 2021. But to have, to see numbers, to see interest like there was in 2019, I think it will be 2023, the, the season of 2023, uh, 22, 23 is when we will all be, um, uh, we can all look at, uh, I mean, if nothing else happened, if everything else holds good and something else doesn't happen, which is why this whole conversation of sustainability is so important, Absolutely. you know? And uh, yeah, and uh, just to address this whole idea of uh, health and safety, um, this is a very, very strong, uh, uh, you know, message that has to go out, uh, which I still, I, you know, the images that you still see uh, in a COVID infected um, uh, world is crowds, you know, everywhere the, when they show you. So I refrain from posting any of these pictures, right? Uh, it is actually the, sadly, the truth is that there are crowds at the airport. So those are not the kind of images. I mean, I, we really can't show pristine, clean, no people kind of airports. Our population is too uh, high and heavy. So the, va the vaccine is uh, very important. Uh, however, we, um, uh, the, the middle end to high end luxury travelers, 
can be it will be quite safe for them to travel uh, you know the the minute the covid numbers kind of stabilize and the borders are open and the flights start to travel and i think that's the sentiment i see especially in the uh, you know in the indophiles people who just love india for wanting dying to come there kind of people so once we the borders open up and the airlines put their uh, the thing there i think more or less we we'll, we should be able to see uh, the thing also remember all the hoteliers um, you know in, in various states whether small or big we are all gearing up where medical exigencies are concerned so all of these things have been done every hotelier has put out his his own uh, even a small hotelier has put out its his own protocol of what he's doing with the protocols and um, i haven't heard of any untoward uh, instance uh, uh, thus far i mean there was one and that was caught even before the client went um, reached there and they completely you know uh, uh, refused bookings uh, they, they told it was a full a full house booking and my uh, our partner hotel said uh, sorry we won't be able to take you and they just on a full house booking he cancelled at the last minute so those are things that are very encouraging and the stories that has to go out into the international market is we are very particular about uh, guest safety a uh, safe destination safe hotel safe guest so this this message that we are very intent on ensuring all three of them because for small hotel here a destination hotel to have a, a guest come in with some kind of symptom or the other is even worse because we have the local community working with us Absolutely. and he, the, this guest will come and leave with this thing and the community will be infected and a lot of these stand alone places are in green uh, green zones you know a lot of these uh, places uh, really are uh, in green zones and it's good that way but so this uh, effort to be um, healthy and protocols and everything should also be the traveler's perspective so just one more question uh, if we were to put all of these things in uh, in, in perspective you know sustainability green zones uh, safety uh, in terms of uh, you know sanitization safety uh, infrastructure what are the three destinations you would recommend uh, as a traveler yourself and as you know co-founder of rare network which are the three destinations you think would do you think should do well or are worth traveling to in say the next one year so i i mean the 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 typical uh, you know the the tourism centers you know because they have always gotten they've been highly evolved where tourism is concerned kerala rajasthan for instance madhya pradesh has been working very very hard uh, more than what the state is doing i think individual stakeholders as hoteliers and everybody the way they are looking at uh you know being very careful about their uh, protocols is also very important this uh, you know and i i this whole uh, thing about uh, flaunting your arrs and flaunting your um, your uh, occupancies and things like that uh, is re really i mean i keep telling hoteliers i said you know open with 50% uh, you know numbers you know just at this point in time you don't want to take major risk at the end of the day up to september it was still off season for a, for plenty of hotels except for those on the mountains it was still uh, off season right let's work on 50% so uh, it's just that they don't see bookings in the winters because that's when the the maximum um, inbound travelers happen so i think just um, just that we are careful we send the right messages out both independently and also um, uh, as a as a country or as a state i think that will go a long way in uh, promoting india as a safe uh, destination and i think that's what everybody is aiming to do all campaigns are aimed at doing this thank you so much shobha for joining us today and thank you for all your wonderful views as usually always candid and always give us the right perspective thank you so much thank you dipali lovely talking to you thank thanks you. a lot